Hey guys, and it's Ben, and welcome to episode one of your uh, bucket mini game tutorials. And first of all, this first episode is basically just a big explanation and setting up what we're going to be doing in this series. So, I have been requested for months <laughs> about about um, you know doing this this tutorial. Turn on my audio a little bit, um, and I you know I, I finally got together some time, and I made a kind of template. I haven't finished the template yet, I haven't even finished it, because I, tr I wanted to just get on with it, and I, f I figured that making a template, um, you know, I'm not I'm not fixing any errors or bugs with you as it goes along to actually show you how to fix errors and bugs as we carry on. So I have this template, and I kind of know what I'm going to be making, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, I'm not going to be using this template at all. Uh, we can actually look inside. There's, there's not actually anything there. So if you're looking at this, the only reason I'm telling you this is because if you look at this and you're like, oh my god, he's really good there. This is like not done at all. Uh, so ignore that. Uh, but it's still gonna, it's still gonna be there because I don't really want to delete it <laughs> because I don't, I hoard things. Shall we? I'm gonna show you my um quickly. I'm going to show you how much I hoard things through my uh, my clips works. But this is my clips workspace. So many plugins of just just random. Just stuff I don't need. So anyway, uh, this tutorial is going to be telling you about what we're going to be making, and we're going to be making a very basic mini game, which is going to just sort of uh, you join the game, and you join your server, and it immediately puts you into a lobby. The lobby will count down from say a minute, and when that's over, it's going to separate the server into two teams, and the two teams will have to fight each other, and then, as if you die, you get kicked out of the server. You can't rejoin until the game restarts, and the team with the the last person left wins, basically is how it's going to work. So we're just going to make our, our mini game first. So our project name, uh, we're going to call it um, <laughs> the, the BC Warfare. Let's do it like that. Okay, cool. The BC Warfare, right. Um, so in our BC Warfare, we're going to go to our build path, configure build path, go to libraries, Excel jars. Oh, and also before you start, my name's Ben. <laughs> if you haven't seen any of my other videos, um, if you don't know anything about Bucket, um, go watch my other tutorials, there is about 80 of them on my channel, episode 1 through to all of them, and just watch all of them, uh, also learn, you know, Java, I'm, I'm not going to explain things as much in this, because I, I have, I'm going to expect that you know, sort of like the, the basics of Bucket and Java and stuff, um, so yeah, that's me, <laughs> so go into your, uh, where you store your jars, and we're going to get craft bucket 1.7.9 and craft bucket or bucket 1.7.9. And to find these, you go to dl.bucket.org and you go to alternate versions, and we have craft bucket and bucket, and we go to craft bucket and we download the uh, the latest one. Uh, you always want to go for recommended, but seeing as there isn't a recommended for 1.7.9, I got the development for craft bucket and then to bucket, get the same one. And then store them somewhere, and we're going to import them both into our project, and then press OK. So now we're going to make our main class. So the package, um, normally for a mini game, you would make it the name of your website. So I'm just going to put com dot bc bros bucket. So that's our website, the bc bros bucket dot com, and the name of our plugin is going to be the bc warfare, like so. And then we have our main or what will be our main class. And so we're just going to actually um, set up a few other package files that might be necessary to us. If you're only using Eclipse, um, then what you're going to want to do here is, in my opinion, the best thing to do is this little down arrow uh, by a package explorer. If you go to package presentation, if you have it on flat, okay, what it does is, if I go into my other project, you'll see it has all of the package files like out laid out like this and personally I'm not a fan of that um, but what what I like to do is if you go to hierarch hierarchical it puts them in so you've got like your packages and then it will be it will continue on and they'll go down and such like that so make sure you have that selected if you're in Eclipse if you're in IntelliJ IDEA then it um, automatically does that for you, which I think is fantastic, and I don't know about other IDEs that you, you might use. Okay, so now we're going to make a package, uh, so it's going to be com dot the BC Bros bucket, or whatever your website is, and then we're going to call our, just, we're making a few things here which we're going to put our classes into, and the first one is going to be listeners, so this is going to listen for things like when a player joins, when a player leaves, 
Um, and you see how that now is just called listeners, but it's inside of this package. So it's actually com.bcbrosbucket.listeners. Okay, so we're going to make another class or another package, and we're going to call this utils. So these are going to be our utility, our game utilities. So stuff that handles the chat and uh, stuff like that. Uh, handlers. So this is going to handle things like the map that we're using and the game. Uh, you know how it starts and, and all that kind of thing. And then finally, we're going to make one called threads. And this is going to contain our information about uh, countdowns, uh, loading up the game, uh, ending the game, that kind of thing. So in our main class, which we have the VC Warfare currently, uh, we want to make sure that this class extends Java plugin. And that will ensure that that is our uh, the class that the class that is ran when the server starts. So this episode, we're going to want to make a so when the server starts, it's going to start up a thread, and it's going to count down. And when there's enough players, the game will start. So it's going to count down from 60 every time. And when it gets to zero, the game is going to start. So if we go into our thread package and we create a new class, and we're going to call this game or, or start, we're going to call this start countdown. So this is our game start countdown. So when the server starts, this is going to be initialized. So first of all, we're going to make a static, a private, a private static integer, which is going to be time. So that's time until start. So we call this time, time until start. And we want to make this class implement, implements, implements runnable. And what runnable does is if you don't know, uh, it just means you can put it in a different thread and you can you can sleep during it. So you can make the uh, the thread stop for uh, X amount of seconds. So that means you want to implement our public void run. So type in public void run into your class file. And when this is first started up, we want to set a uh, time until start equal to say 60 seconds. So that we want our game to start in 60 seconds. And we want to continually run in this loop. We want to continually run this loop until the game starts. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to type whilst true. So it's going to always run in here. Uh, we want to say that we want to loop through the time. So we want to say four, and then we can put just a semicolon because we already have our time you know, variable. And then we can say time until start. Uh, is less than, but it's greater than or equal to zero, we want to minus one from our time until start. So what this is doing is whenever this is run, we're going to loop through our time until start uh, every second, and we'll get to that in a second, uh, until it's equal to zero. And when it is equal to zero, finally, it's going to start the game. Oh my god, that voice crack. <laughs> right, so in here, we want to check if the time until start is equal to zero. Now, if the time until start is equal to zero, we want to start the game. So we're just going to put a comment here, and we're going to say to do start game, like so. And then we want to break out of this because we've we've reached the end. There is no more. <laughs> okay. So now what we want to do is we want to make sort of notifiers in here. So we're going to check if the the time until start is equal to 60 or the time until start is equal to 30 or the time until start is equal to 15 or equal to 10 what we could do here instead of all of this thing is use an operator called the uh, modulo so we could say if time until start modulo say 10 so what this is doing is it's saying if time until start divided by 10 is equal to 0 or time until start is less than 10 then we want to do something so if and if the number the time to start divided by 10 equals 0 so if it's a multiple of 10 or time until start is less than 10 we want to broadcast to all the players that the game will start in x amount of seconds so in here we're going to type another to do and we're going to say uh, broadcast broadcast time until start like so now what we want to say is we want to make sure that the thread is, is sleeping every second because else this would get run infinitely quickly. So we're going to say try catch 
exception E, or it's actually a interrupted interrupted exception E because we're working with threads and E dot print stack trace like so. And in here we're going to type thread dot sleep for one second, which is one thousand milliseconds like so. Uh, and then we want to print stack trace and then just shut down the server. So bucket dot shut down because something's gone horribly wrong. I'm just going to shut down the server. Um, so that is how that works. Uh, and yeah, basically that is how we're going to do those things. So now we want to make a start method and a broadcast method. So in our main class, we're going to make two public static void start and a public static void stop. Obviously, we're not going to be using the stop one yet, but we're going to use the start one now. And in the start countdown, we're going to type the BC warfare dot start. Now, obviously, we'll be adding stuff into the start method, but for now, we're just going to use it so we know that this class is actually completed. And the broadcast method, we want to go into our utilities class, and we're going to make a new class in our utilities class called chat utilities. Chat utilities, like so. And in here, we're going to make, there's going to be lots of methods, and our first one is going to be a public static void, and we're going to broadcast, like so. And in our broadcast, we want to say string message. Now, down here, in the same class, we're going to make a private uh, static string, and it's going to be called starter. And this starter is going to be at the start of all of our messages, and all it's going to do is going to return a string, which is our little tag at the start of our messages, which allows um, the message just to, to look all the same throughout all of our messages. Um, instead, of it, So we don't have to type the actual string into our broadcast method every time. So this is just going to return, uh, it's going to return a string, and I'll explain this in a minute. What I'm going to actually do is up here, I'm going to say import static org.bucket.chat color dot star and what this does is it means we can just type red and like capitals red so if I type dark gray space and then that that is doing the same as saying chat color dot dark gray so if we import that static org dot bucket dot chat color dot star at the top of your class and then we type the following or whatever you want to type so I'm gonna for my starter I'm gonna say I'm gonna have a dark gray opening and then a red the BC warfare and then another dark gray. I actually typed chat color, which completely defies the point of using that. And then a space and then white. Because I want all our messages to be in white, like so. So now when we broadcast a message to all the players on the server, what we're going to say is we're going to loop through every single player on the server. So player player equals player uh, bucket dot get online players. So we're going to loop through all the players on the server. And we're going to say, Player dot send message starter plus message, and we don't actually need these brackets here because we only have one line of code. So that is going to broadcast all the players on the server our um, starter message plus the message that we've defined. So in our start countdown, we're going to say chat utilities chat utilities dot broadcast to all the players on the server the message which says time until start seconds until the game starts like so so that's just going to broadcast to all the players on the server that the game is going to start in x amount of seconds depending on how quickly this runs through um, but obviously we don't want the game to start if the game can't start and so next throw up we're going to be getting into that and how to make it so when the game you know starts it's going to be only when the game can start First of all, before we do that next tutorial, we're going to make sure that this uh, whole class actually is, you know, initiated. So we're going to make a public void on enable, which if you do bucket, you know that this gets called when you plug in enables. And we're going to say new thread. So we're getting a new thread, new thread. And we're going to start this thread. And the thread is going to be of the type uh, start countdown. And because it takes a runnable in its parameters and our start countdown implements runnable, it's going to start that thread and it's going to run this method and it's going to keep on running this method until it cannot run this method anymore. Uh, so yeah, that is how we do that. And now I think about it actually, we don't actually need this whilst true because when this gets run, it's just going to keep running this.
uh, which is always good. Um, actually, no, we do need it because then when when this gets, um, we actually also want to place time until starts. Well, move that and put it in the whilst tree, like so. And what we're also going to want to do is we're going to want to add another one of these blocks here underneath the whilst tree. So outside of here, in these brackets, we're going to want to just copy and paste this down here so that where if it's running this whilst true loop um, continually, but it's not going through here because it's already gone through here and it started the game, it's just going to you know sleep for a second and it's going to continue so it's not straining the server it's just going to it's going to sleep every second and then every second it will check if it needs to start the game again um, and we're actually instead of cutting that we're just going to paste it and just make sure it does it twice there so thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next tutorial